In these examples, we're going to look at the domain of a function and then evaluate the function at a particular value. Now for this course, there's going to be two major areas that we're concerned about having what's called a domain restriction, is where our domain can't be all real numbers because we have to be careful about something else going on. So in this particular problem, the function that we're given is f of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus 5x. Uh, for this particular example, what's going to happen is that this value underneath the square root symbol, which is called the radicand, that value needs to be greater than or equal to 0 for this thing to evaluate to a real number. If this number under here was negative, that would create a complex number or that imaginary unit i. And at this point in time, we're not working under the uh, complex number system. So for this thing to make sense, our radicand has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So in order to find the domain, let's find the values that would make sense to put in for this function. So we must have then that the radicand, which is 4 minus 5x, uh, that has to be bigger than or equal to 0. And then we're just going to solve this inequality. So then I'm going to have 4 has to be greater than or equal to 5x. And then dividing both sides by 5, I'll have that 4 fifths is greater than or equal to x. Or if I want to write this in set builder notation, the domain is the set of all x's such that uh, x is less than or equal to 4 fifths. Or if we had to write it in interval notation, uh, my domain would be from negative infinity up to 4 fifths with a bracket on the 4 fifths. All right, so that's going to be the domain for this one. Now let's evaluate the function. So we were asked to find f of negative 1. So inside of my function, I'm going to have 4 minus 5 times negative 1. All right, so if I go ahead and evaluate that, I'm going to have 4 plus 5, which is 9. And then now apply the square root. The square root of 9 is 3. All right, so now let's take a look at our next example. So for this one, it's the same directions. <clears throat> We're going to find the domain of the function and evaluate the function at x is equal to negative 1. Now, in this one, the special thing we have to worry about for the domain is that when we work with a rational expression or something that's written in fraction form, uh, whatever is going on in the denominator uh, is not allowed to be uh, evaluated to 0. You can't, if you have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction, that creates a undefined uh, expression. So this denominator expression, which in this case is the absolute value of x plus 2, uh, that expression is not allowed to evaluate to 0. Well, the only way that this absolute value would even generate a 0 is if the expression on the inside, the x plus 2, uh, generated a 0. So let's just take a look at the inside. What value would make x plus 2 equal to 0? Uh, and that would be x is uh, negative 2, right? So that would be the bad values. If I uh, plug that into my uh, original function, which is g of x is equal to x plus 2 all over the absolute value of x plus 2. If I plug negative 2 in the denominator, I get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0, and then I have a 0 in the denominator. So that's the bad value. So we need to remove that value from our... Uh, domain. So in set builder notation, the domain would be the set of all x's such that x is not equal to negative 2. Or if I wanted to write this in interval notation, uh, it would be from negative infinity up to negative 2, union negative 2 to positive infinity. Alright, so now let's evaluate the function. So they asked us to find g of negative 1, which means everywhere I see x, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 plus 2 in the numerator, and in the denominator I'll have negative 1 plus 2, and I'm going to take the absolute value of that. All right, so upstairs I have negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. Downstairs, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, but I still have to take the absolute value of it. If you wanted to, you could do that all at one point in time. Be careful with those absolute value bars, especially when there's a 1 on the inside, that your absolute value bars don't look like 1s. So I try to make mine a little bit longer than however big I make my 1s. So I get a 1 over, and then the absolute value of 1 is 1, and then that just simplifies to 1. All right, good so far. Let's take a look at our last example, finding the domain and evaluating a function. So in this one, our function is h of x is equal to x minus 4 
all over the expression x squared plus 5x minus 36. So in this one, I'm working with a fraction or a rational expression. So again, the key thing on these ones is that the denominator uh, is not allowed to evaluate to zero. Uh, so the x squared plus 5x minus 36 is not allowed to evaluate to zero. So I need to uh, solve this. Uh, if you wanted to, you could use the quadratic formula, but you're actually going to find that this does factor really nicely. So I'm just going to go ahead and factor it. All right, so this will factor into uh, x plus 9, x minus 4 is not equal to 0. And then setting each one of these factors not equal to 0, you get x is not equal to negative 9, and x is not equal to 4. So in this case, I'm going to have two values that I have to throw out of my domain in set builder notation, the domain is the set of all x's, such that x is not equal to negative 9 comma 4. Or if I wanted to write this in interval notation, uh, my interval notation would be from negative infinity up to negative 9, uh, union symbol, negative 9 to 4, union symbol, and then 4 to positive infinity, and then parentheses on everybody, because we want to exclude those values. All right, and then finally, I'm going to find uh, the function at negative 1. So each of negative 1 is going to be uh, negative 1 minus 4 in the numerator. And then downstairs, remember when you're going to substitute in a negative number and it has an exponent, you need parentheses around that negative number. So the parentheses are optional elsewhere. It's probably just a good idea to always substitute in a negative number with parentheses, but on the exponents, it's actually required. All right, so negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 upstairs. Uh, downstairs, I'm going to get 1 minus 5 minus 36. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 5 over downstairs. I'm going to get uh, negative 40. Let's see, a negative divided by a negative is positive, and 5 over 40 simplifies to the fraction 1 8th.